Hi, this is Zippor Designs for Noble Desktop, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use 3D layers and cameras in Adobe After Effects. So we're first going to be setting up parts of the project that we're going to animate, namely the top and back flaps of this pizza box. We're going to animate those opening up, the whole box falling in, and then get to animating a camera. We're going to be relying on, no on a null object to control the camera easier and have it swing around and zoom in as the box opens. We're going to be taking this step by step, so, you know, try not to get overwhelmed. 3D can be like that, but yeah, like I said, step by step. And you can see, here's what the project looks like when it is done. So if you've been following this 3D and After Effects series we've been doing, you'll have heard me say this, but I'll repeat it for any new watchers. 3D and After Effects is a lot easier to pick up than traditional 3D programs. Granted, it's technically using 2D elements to create the illusion of true 3D. That's what makes it great for animating slick looking logos, intro sequences, opening books, ro and rotating objects. It has a much easier learning curve than typical 3D and looks great. So we're going to be using a pre-prepared file here with the pizza box mostly put together. And uh, yeah, you'll find that in the video description below. So let's get started. So upon opening this pre-comp, this is what you're going to see. Um, everything is set up in 3D space. And I want you to notice that everything, except for one layer, is set up so that the bottom flap uh, controls all of them, right? They're all parented to the bottom flap, much, less, much like a real pizza box. If you were to move around the bottom of a pizza box, the rest of the, the flaps follow. They're also um, nearly all oriented in 3D space at 90 degrees away from each other relative to the bottom flap. Again much like a real box, you know, like those side flaps are 90 degrees away from the bottom flap. The only one that's different is a top flap, and that's because, see, it's parented to the back flap, because you cannot open a pizza box without affecting the back flap, right? If you're open a pizza box, if you open the top, you're also going to be moving the back flap a little bit. So with that out of the way, let's get started on animating this thing. So at one second and two frames in, we're going to be grabbing this back flap and let's hit P for position. And you'll see there's X, Y, Z. We're going to be animating the Y. So at one second, two frames in, we're going to be animating the back flap. So hit R for rotation and we're going to be animating the Y rotation here. So we're going to put down a keyframe and let's set that Y rotation to zero. We want this guy to be mostly closed. Then at two seconds, uh, 24 frames in, we're going to be animating the back flap again. Let's put this guy at 90 degrees. There we go. I'm going to easy ease both these guys by selecting both of them. Right click, keyframe assistant, and off to easy ease. And like we mentioned before, the first thing that opens when a pizza box opens is the back flap, just a little bit. Then let's animate the rotation of the top flap. So right where we left off at 2 seconds, 24 frames in, let's set a keyframe. This is going to be 0. Then at four seconds in, it's going to be 25 degrees. So all the way open. And I've easy eased those as well. Let's head back to the origin. And we're gonna be animating this whole box like falling into the composition as you've seen at the beginning. Since the bottom flap controls everything, that's what we're going to be animating. Hit P for position. So the coordinates of the box when it first comes in, it's going to be 500. So in the X space, it's going to be 500. Um, in Y, it's going to be 640. And perhaps most importantly, in Z, in the in and out dimension, we're going to be putting it at negative 665. And that's going to make it move closer towards the screen. Now, it may look a little bit odd here, but you have to remember we're going to be putting a camera in afterwards. So the idea is that we want this box to move away from us initially, bounce back a little bit, and open up. That's all we want. The camera is going to provide the cool dynamic feel to the whole piece. All right, hit that stopwatch to set a keyframe. At 12 seconds in, let's have this thing overshoot. So we're just going to be changing that Z to positive 90 because it like really falls in and it moves a little bit past where it's supposed to end up at the end. Then in one second in, it's at 500, 640, and just zero, settles in. And just put an easy ease on the first and last uh, keyframe. And if we play back the animation, this is what we see. Falls in and opens up, settles back into position a little bit. Now let's put a camera in the scene. Go up to layer, new camera. Sorry about that. It's going to be a one node camera. It should pop up on the top layer layer stack. And we're also going to be making a new, come on, a layer new null object. And the reason for that is that we want to be able to control the camera a lot easier. And the null really helps with that. So I'm actually going to scale up my null a little bit, about like 300. And I'm going to move with Y. I'm going to hit Y and move the anchor point right to the middle. This is just something personal I do. Um, and then I'm going to make it a different color so it stands out. It matches the camera, but it stands out in the layer stack. This is just for organization purposes. And I'm going to move it straight into the middle of the composition. And yeah, this is just a controller. So I just want it to be easy, easily accessed and I could recognize it where it is at a glance. 
So that that's all that setup was. Parent the camera to the null. Oh, and remember to activate 3D on the null as well. So toggle open. So we're going to be here at 24 frames. And we are going to be uh, animating the rotation of this thing, of this camera. And also we're going to be opening up camera options. And let's head over to blur level. Push that down all the way to zero. If you follow the series so far, you'll know that this is kind of prerequisite for working with the camera. And we're really going to be animating the zoom over here, you see? So at 24 uh, frames in, we're going to be putting the uh, zoom, let's say, let's have a zoom somewhere around 3700, I think. 3700, please. That'll automatically put down a keyframe. If not, just hit the stopwatch. And as for the rotation on the, on the uh, null, I want the X rotation to be at around 133 for the X and 40 for the Y. Um, you know, it's coming from underneath. Um, but if you like it looking like a different way, you know, these numbers are just guidelines. This is just what I found to work, but you don't have to stick exactly to what I'm doing. Right, hit that stopwatch, set those keyframes. Now at two seconds in, the XY rotation is going to be uh, 50 and 43 uh, respectively. And uh, let's get that zoom at 5200. There we go. Now it overshoots just a little bit, but don't worry about that. Let's easy ease everything. And as you can see, I've easy eased all these keyframes. I've also turned on motion blur. Um, usually do this at the end. I do realize that I've had it on this whole time. Um, but usually do this at the end just to save processing power um, and make sure that all these little motion blurs are switched on, but it adds a lot to the piece. It's literally, I mean, it's what it sounds like. It's motion blur, um, but it takes up a good amount of processing power. So we usually put it on um, at the end, um, unlike what I did today. Let's head back to the main comp and turn on our new project and play it back. There we go. It looks really, really cool. So that's it. Like I mentioned, 3D in After Effects has enough versatility to create title sequences with depth, three-dimensional logos, to zoom through environments, or to combine all of these ideas. Try adjusting the settings on the camera to get more blur on fast-moving pieces, or take the camera through an up-close shot of your logo before zooming out. You know, ideas like that. So yeah, let us know if you have any comments or questions below. Um, I might make a tutorial, I don't know if I mentioned this, on how to make this pizza box. If that's something you're interested, please let us know. And yeah, we'd love to hear what you're working on uh, right now. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use 3D in After Effects. This has been Sapporo Zines from Noble Desktop.